Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can already tell from the thumbnail and from the title, we are going to be talking about growing my hair into that really short pixie that I showed on the thumbnail into what I have right now. So I've been growing it out probably for a little bit over a year now, and it has grown a good amount. So I just wanted to give you guys the tips and tricks that I used and kind of the insight on it. Um, if you're new to my channel and you don't already know, I am a licensed cosmetologist. I worked at a hair salon for a few years as a hairstylist. I don't do it full time anymore, I just do it part time, but I still have that background which I think is really um, vital and important in this kind of a video and I can give you guys good tips to grow out your hair like I did. I know a lot of people look up these videos before they even cut their hair into a pixie. So if you are one of those people, I did film a video. It was kind of like a pros and cons of cutting your hair into a pixie cut, which is a really good video to watch if you have yet to cut your hair. I wish I found something like that. It is just everything you need to know and it'll make the decision so much easier for you and kind of just gives you the rundown on what you're going to deal with and it's all the pros, all the cons, in my own opinion. I will leave that list in the description box for you guys. Right away, I just wanna say I am very sick, so I'm sorry if my voice is really annoying. I'm trying my best not to sniffle and cough. I've taken off of work the last few days. I actually took off today. Hope my boss isn't watching, but I am really sick. Um, but today's the first day I woke up without a fever, so I was like, you know what, I just gotta film and get this up there for you guys. I've been wanting to film this for a while, but I thought that now my hair was at a good length to kind of talk to you guys about it. Um, I did take a bunch of pictures throughout the entire process. I took like month to month pictures to kind of just show you guys what you will be dealing with in the horrible, horrible stages of growing out a pixie cut. It was brutal, but you just gotta do what you gotta do. So with that, I will stop rambling and we will get right into the video. So right off the bat, I do just wanna mention that your hair on average grows about half an inch a month. So in a full year, your hair only really grows about six inches for an average person. Um, in a year, my hair grew about eight inches. So I think I definitely was doing something right. Um, my hair used to grow really fast when I was younger, but then as I've gotten older, it doesn't really grow that fast. So I think all these things that I'm going to share with you guys definitely did help. So with that, the first thing that I want to mention, which is probably the most important, is getting frequent trims. Now I know a lot of people say frequent trims makes your hair grow faster. It doesn't make your hair grow faster, but frequent trims does kind of cut off those dead ends that you do have. Even if you take good care of your hair, everyone gets dead ends. It's inevitable, you can't really help it. Obviously like doing a lot of color and a lot of heat products does cause it more. You can get split ends more easily, but it, it is inevitable and everyone will get split ends. So cutting it kind of breaks off those split ends, so that way if you do have a dead end and you don't cut it off, it will split and kind of make your hair lose length, if that makes sense. I would say a good rule of thumb would be every six to eight weeks get your hair trimmed, unless you do a lot of heat on your hair or you color it a lot. Or if you see split ends, then I would definitely get it trimmed even sooner than that. I know it can definitely be really inconvenient, but if you want to grow out your hair, that just really helps the process. If you don't do the frequent trims, you'll have a lot of dead ends, and they're just going to break off, so that length that you just grew will break off anyway, and you'll kind of notice that it's going to be staying at the same length for a while, which is so annoying. My mom just brought my tea. She's so nice. So number two is try to steer clear of coloring your hair. I know it's really hard, especially if you are a color lover and you love to switch up your color. I know it can be very difficult, but really just try to stay away from coloring it. Coloring your hair can damage the cuticle of your hair, which is the outermost layer of your hair. And if you damage the cuticle, then you can get split ends even more easily, which can lead to breakage and all of that bad stuff you do not want while growing out your hair. The fewer chemical treatments you do, the the more it'll grow and the better your hair will be. So that is definitely just a good rule to stick with, just at least for a year. You can tell I added some lighter pieces. I actually have a video on how I did it. I just balayaged my hair at home. That was like almost a year after I started growing out, so I did wait a really long time, and trust me, it was really hard, but just something you have to do. And then number three, which has to do with number two, would be stay away from heat styling, which again is also really hard. If you are going to style it, just 
try to pick one um try to let your hair air dry and then you can either straighten it or curl it i find that curling my hair is less damaging than straightening it because you know when you strain it you really have to get every single piece unless you already have fairly straight hair for me i have pretty wavy hair so curling it i can kind of just leave out some pieces because i already have a wave to it as when i straighten it i have to strain every single piece so I found curling it was the least damaging so I would just kind of curl it and I would let it air dry because you don't want to blow dry it and curl it or blow dry it and straighten it. Just try to stay away from all of that stuff at least for a few months or at least just do it maybe like a few times a week instead of every single day. And if you are, definitely, definitely use heat protectant. My favorite would be the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In product. This does 10 different things to your hair. You can find this at a lot of different stores. I normally buy mine online. You can buy it at Sally's. Um, so it does 10 things instantly. It repairs dry damaged hair, adds shine, detangles, controls frizz, seals and protects hair color, prevents split ends, stops hair breakage, creates silkiness, enhances natural body, and it's a flat iron and thermal protector. So this is a really good spray to spray your hair when it's wet right after the shower and it acts as your heat protectant and also does all those other things. So it's kind of like a one and done product. Definitely really good. It's not too expensive. If you have any other favorite heat protectant, definitely, definitely use it. You do want to protect your hair from any kind of damage that could happen to it. Number four is taking care of your scalp. Your scalp is very, very important. I don't think a lot of people realize how important it is. I think it's kind of like a part on your body that kind of just gets left out. But your scalp is very important. Actually, your scalp can really stimulate hair growth. So doing um, cleansing treatments or doing moisturizing treatments for your scalp can definitely help your hair grow. I also really love to, when I shampoo or when I condition my hair, kind of really get in there and almost massage my scalp. And that really stimulates the blood flow and gets your, your blood and energy going in your scalp. And it can make hair growth and stimulate hair growth which is really cool and it definitely helps hair production so that's another really good tip um, and it also feels really good when I just want to relax I just give myself a scalp massage it's definitely better when someone else does it I love getting my hair shampooed at hair salon it's so nice you guys definitely know that I was a shampooer for a while and every single person would tell me how nice it is but that is really just like a small little nice thing that you can do and it really does help Number five, don't shampoo every single day. Shampooing every single day really strips your hair of its natural oils. I know a lot of people are stuck up on this. A lot of people can't get out of that habit of shampooing their hair all the time, but you really don't want to. I would say two to three times a week shampoo your hair. Obviously, you can take a whole body shower, wash your whole body, but just don't shampoo your hair every single day. It's really bad for your scalp, which just like we talked about, your scalp is really important in your hair growth. It's really bad of your scalp. It strips it of its natural oils and actually it can cause your hair to be even more greasy by stripping your hair of the natural oils that your scalp has. Your scalp and your body can kind of overproduce those oils to make up for that and it can cause your hair to be even more greasy. If your hair is really greasy in the meantime, invest in a good dry shampoo. I don't really ever have that problem, so I can't really recommend a good dry shampoo. I know a lot of people use the Batiste is a really popular one, but I don't know from experience. Just go to Ulta. Um, maybe you can ask someone there. Uh, go online, read some reviews. But yeah, that, that really helps, and that can kind of hold you over till your next wash day. Giving at least two to three days in between washing your hair really lets those oils penetrate into your hair, which replenishes them and hydrates them, nourishes them, the hairs, which will help it grow and will help it not break, which is really important. Number six is kind of a cliche, but it really is true. Eating and drinking the right foods and drinks is so important. As you guys have all heard a hundred times, like I have, put good in, get good out. It's so true. It's just like your skin. They always tell you if you want your skin to glow and you know you want to get rid of blemishes and all that stuff, drink a lot of water and eat the right foods because it really does work. It's the same thing with your hair and the whole entire rest of your body, honestly. Drinking a lot of water is so important. If you nourish the inside, your outside will definitely, definitely benefit. It only makes sense eating good foods and helping your body and drinking a lot of water and again, helping your body 
helps regenerate cells and helps production of everything in your body so definitely take that into consideration you should already be drinking a lot of water that is definitely my new year's goal i have been so much better with it in the last few months just drinking a lot of water i definitely have to get better with my food choices but for now one step at a time i really try to drink a lot of water and i can already notice my skin so much better so that helps a lot with your hair too Number seven is getting a good multivitamin that can really help your body, help hair, nail, skin, those kind of vitamins. I'm sure you guys have seen them at the store. A good multivitamin to get for growing out your hair would be a vitamin with biotin in it, um, vitamin C, vitamin B, all of those really help with hair production and um, new cell regeneration, all that kind of stuff. Those vitamins really support hair and scalp growth. Also a bonus to taking something like that for your hair is that you'll probably get better nails and better skin. So that's definitely a huge bonus. Okay, so my last and final tip, number eight, is be very careful with your wet hair right out of the shower. Um, when your hair is wet, that means the cuticle of the hair is open, which means it is more susceptible to breakage or damage. So just be very careful with it. I would definitely recommend investing in a wet brush. You can probably get them anywhere. Look online. You could probably get them at Walgreens, Target, anywhere like that. Sally's. They're fairly inexpensive. They're really, really soft bristle and easy on your hair. Also, I would recommend starting to brush from the bottom up. I know a lot of people just start brushing right at the top, but with knots and stuff, you can kind of rip out your hair. So you always want to start down here and then kind of work your way up so not to pull it out or not to cause any more knots. Okay, so right now I'm going to insert all of my pictures from all the different months. I didn't take pictures up until now. I kind of stopped. I think I might have taken like seven months or so. Um, something I totally forgot to mention was that when you see these pictures, you're going to think that the back of my hair didn't grow at all, but it did. I was just cutting the back of my hair because you never want to have a mullet. I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. It's kind of hard to explain. But so this hair right here, when I first started growing it out, it was about this short. Well, obviously in my back, like the nape of my neck, that hair, if I continued to grow it without cutting it at all, this hair would be way longer than this hair. So it would have been like a complete mullet, if that makes sense. So in the pictures, you're going to be like, wow, like your, the back of your hair didn't grow at all. It did. I just kept cutting it. And I cut the back of my neck short until this and all of these hairs reached the, that back area. And then once it reached there, then from here, I just completely let it grow all together. So it was somewhat one length. It's not completely one length. As you can tell, there are some short pieces. But for the most part, it's only like an inch or so off. You don't want a mullet, guys. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Totally forgot to mention that. And number one, when the, get the frequent trims. Not only just for the breakage and everything. Because you don't want a mullet. So that's very important. I was lucky enough at that time I was working at a hair salon so I didn't have to pay anything. I know it can be expensive and that does suck. Um, but that's just one of the things of growing out your hair and getting your hair cut into a pixie. That's why, again, if you are thinking about it, for sure watch my video on the pros and cons. You do not want to cut your hair without knowing everything that goes into it. But again, I'm going to insert all the months right here. With that guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope I said everything I wanted to say. My head is super cloudy and foggy right now. I hope I got my point across. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I would love to answer them for you. If you use any of these tips or if you cut your hair and are in the process of growing it out, send me pictures. I would love to see them. And with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! <coughs> Hi, that. <coughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to my. I was just gonna say welcome back to the Disney Channel. Oh my gosh. <coughs> <coughs> um.
my favorite. <coughs> Which is, which will hurts <coughs> to get rid of those knots. <coughs> Open, which means it is more susceptible to breakage. So just be very careful. Oh my God, my stomach just growled so loud. <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> okay, so number eight, my final. Oh my god. If you guys 